As we welcome back our co-host in the second hour, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield at a full table now. Billy, good morning yeah, to you. it is a full table with some pretty illustrious individuals. I feel um, intimidated. <laughs> well, you shouldn't. You're an Admiral. No, no, I feel intimidated with these folks on both sides. Well, that's the, the because Queen everybody, Bee. everybody's in a high chair except for you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder why. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. That would be uh, Maria Lawrence and Maria, good morning to you. Good morning. Great to be here. And the mics are with <laughs> us here this morning. Uh, and I'll go first in terms of who owns the place versus who doesn't any longer uh the mogul mike hornby morning delegate good morning rob and uh michael Hyde. good morning delegate good morning good to be here so i saw your picture <laughs> my first thought what was a great colonel picture. harlan sanders yeah. right there, man. On, on the chat or john travolta yeah, i was gonna say oh, john travolta they're very similar either yeah. one i'll take either one amen i have never thought amen. of either one of those two either one my, my third thought was foghorn just, leghorn just staying alive <laughs> boy 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 you bother me boy what is one of those All right hey that's let's, a great suit that was one of my summer suits. So I, I bought a couple linen suits for in the summertime when it's hot instead of wearing a, a, one of those heavy wool suits. And it was but, warm yeah, yesterday. It, it was very so warm So there you yesterday. go. You yeah, Mike's never won a uh, fashion award down, down yeah. south. In, in it's, yeah, it's he's beautiful. so jealous. He just can't pull off I what I wear. That's what it is. <laughs> you know, I bought I'm a couple suits while we were down in, in uh, Charleston uh, this past uh, session. Actually, a couple of sport coats. And... Um, and I brought him that, home that and everything, and he right? looked at him and he was like, "Oh my God, those are hideous!" And I was like, "What's the matter with you?" And I want, I get more compliments <laughs> for those two jackets than anything else I wear. When and he Gino is so Chiarelli, be the fashion place. He's so I mean, well, I'm just saying, when Chiarelli compliments you on your sport coat, and he's donned out like the Godfather, <laughs> I don't know how far you take that, but we just, we definitely have different. Just, he's taste. green with envy. <laughs> I can see it now. Uh, the photo, of course, was in regards to Governor Justice's appearance about Route 9. And you were there. I think Delegate Chuck Hurst, uh, Senate President Craig Blair there as well, with the photos that I've seen so far. Uh, Paul Espinosa Paul well. Espinosa, yep. very good. I didn't see Paul. Uh, tell me what the improvements are going to be and how soon and how they will help. Well, first of all, that's my district. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of, of the governor and uh, Senator Blair. Um, of, of making some improvements to Route 9. This, let me make this clear. This is not what I wanted. I, I want to bypass um, around Hedgesville, um, and that has sort of been on the books for 40 years. That's truly what I want and what I think Hedgesville needs. Um, but in, in the interim, I don't think there's the money for that right now. So in the interim, this is this is the fix. Um, uh, I, I think their, their uh, intention is to put uh, turn lanes in Hedgesville, um, and change the light structure around a little bit so that uh, morning traffic uh, can flow a little bit better. Um, and it is already, um, but also evening traffic. And the lights don't change when the evening traffic, so you still have a backup in the evening. So I think they're going to make some changes there as well. And then there's several places along Route 9 where they're going to put in roundabouts um, in, instead of traffic lights. And um, they, they believe that that will alleviate a a lot of the traffic uh, flow problems that we have on Route 9 uh, right now. Uh, my, my personal opinion is that it's not a long-term fix. This is a short-term fix, especially with the growth that we're experiencing in that area. So um, my hope is that uh, this alleviates uh, uh, the traffic situation on a short-term basis. And what's the expected completion date? Um, well, all of that is subject to permits and so on and so forth, environmental studies and stuff. But uh, they indicated yesterday, uh, Secretary Riston did, that they think this is going to proceed pretty quick and that they will be able to complete the majority of this work um, within uh, uh, two seasons of construction. Now, while an already two-lane congested road is under construction, what's that going to be like delay-wise? Has this been covered or examined in any way to find out what might be ways sure. of taking pressure off because sure. i can and see that road under construction <laughs> look at that right absolutely and and um there were some discussions yesterday that uh i think the county council has approached um uh the current sheriff rob blair about possibly getting some funding for uh his deputies to be out there and controlling traffic flow through the construction zones um as you may know, we, we had a flagger um, 
that was hit and tragically killed here mm -hmm. in the state of West Virginia recently. And uh, the county council has uh, determined that uh, we need uh, police in those areas and to make sure that that doesn't happen here in Berkeley County. Mike, I applaud you and your colleague and everyone else that started moving on this. My concern is that the powers to be, the Secretary of Transportation, the governor in future years, said we've already done something. So forget about the long-term fix. And as you've so aptly pointed out, we have to do a long-term fix. And I don't think it's uh, mimicking or widening the road we have now. We've got to have a totally different route. But I'm, I'm concerned this will delay that sort of thinking. Well, I have the same concerns, and, and I think that's sort of what happened with uh, the, the Raleigh Street extension. I feel like sometimes we, we trade this for that. Um, there There's also plans for a, a northern bypass around um, Martinsburg, from, from Route 9 around Martinsburg on the north side to Route 9 going west. Um, and I believe some of those, including Route 9 to Berkeley Springs and the bypass, have, were, were shelved because we said we wanted the, the Raleigh Street extension, uh, which was more important at the time. And then once that happened, you, you know, it pushed Route 9 yeah, way Bill, down think, the list. Yeah, you're right. exactly right. I was part of those discussions, sure. Mike, and I agreed to that. Uh, George Karras and I sat down with Senator Manchin at the time and agreed the fact that the monies that was coming to that bar, uh, bypass around Martinsburg would go into Raleigh Street Extension. I still think that was a wise decision. Uh, and I think looking back, I don't think anybody in 2008, 2007, 2009 thought there'd be 23,500 vehicles going down through Hedgesville. Right. Um, I, th they presumed that the other roads were, yeah. were more. So and these things are looked at way in the future. So I, I do commend uh, the governor and, and his team and, and Senate President Craig Blair for, for doing something. I just hope that we can look forward now and, and, it's, and plan it, better. I, I was going to say, it's really all about the money, yeah. too. I mean, the, the cost um, increases astronomically every year that you – look at that and you know there's just never enough money for roads um it doesn't seem like so well and I th i'll give uh, i'll give some credit to to uh, Sen senator blair for bringing this back to the attention of doh and saying listen we have to do something maybe we don't have the money for a bypass right now but you better find the money for something because something has to be done about that road um, if you travel in the morning or you travel in the evening on Route 9 through Hedgesville, it is a disaster. I was going to uh, say, and, and clearly his, all of us right. have done that. So. And, and he lives out there, too, yeah. and he, so he knows. So um, kudos to him for, for going back to the governor's office and the Department of Highways and saying, uh, if it's not a bypass, it's got to be something, and you have to do it now. Mm -hmm. was so. it, how often, you mentioned Jimmy Riston, and I know how difficult it is to get a Charleston-centric highway department to see what the issues really are in the eastern panhandle. Did this help make them more aware, or were they already physically present and saw what the issues well, were? You, you got to realize we we also have we, we had the Charlestown Road done, we had uh, Inwood done. We we have had a lot of road projects happen. It's just a matter of which ones were important. I don't think they really thought that the Hedgesville area was going to get that kind of development. I don't think anybody saw that coming, um, and, and so we we got a little behind there. And I think. Because they're out here, and because of the you know the leadership we have down there, this is kind of how this once stuck once up. Blair brought it to their attention, yeah. uh, Secretary Riston did send one of his engineers up here, and I talked to him uh, yesterday as well, and he said he sat at different places on Route Nine at different parts of the day to see what the flow of traffic was. So he's seen it. He's he knows where the the congestion is. He knows where the the the, the engineer does. So. Um, he recognized at that time, yeah, we, we do have to do something here. So uh, I think uh, kudos to Senator Blair for bringing it to their attention again and Jimmy, uh, Secretary Riston, for coming up and, and are, are, investigating. Are the improvement locations now set in stone or are they still up for negotiation? No, I think the improvement locations are, are pretty much set right now. And um, I'm going to say there's probably about 10 or 15 of them. Um, whether they're going to do widening or, or roundabouts or, or whatever. Um, and, and they're already doing some uh, small bridge work there below Hedgesville. And so, so some of that stuff's already going on. 
And Mike, don't forget about the importance of having justice here. Even a lame duck governor carries phenomenal influence with state bureaucracy of what things go. Oh, I, I don't yeah. disagree with that at all. And in regards to the construction project, uh, one of our members of the Facebook commenting community uh, said maybe lessons learned from the Route 340 project, which went pretty quickly ahead of schedule and uh, was uh, most, I think uh, people would agree, completed very efficiently. But that was a total shutdown of the road. You can't do that on Route 9. No, no, no. no they're they're going to have to uh, make it passable. Um, and. And I think they strategically have to determine when they're going to work on the road. So obviously from like six in the morning to eight in the morning, you should not be doing construction. And from anywhere from three in the evening till six or seven in the evening, you probably shouldn't be doing construction either. So hopefully they're going to be doing some of this overnight when you have the lowest amount of traffic, because Rob, you're right. You cannot shut this corridor down with, with, 20 to 30,000 cars a day going down that route. We talked a little bit about the new roundabout at Rockcliffe Drive and Tavern Road. And for me, I use that every day, a couple times a day. And, you know, remember when they said Friday night, shut down at six, it'll be open Monday morning at either six or eight or something like that. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's exactly what happened. And it was done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Again, a little bit of, um, you know, consternation while it was going on. But to have that done just in a weekend, although I will say it'll be nice to have the yield signs because it makes me a little <laughs> anxious when I'm going through there. It's like, am I going? Am I going? Who's going? Am I stopping? But um, I usually but go that through was... them screaming, you know, <laughs> go, just... go. What are you waiting on? Go. As somebody who <laughs> learns how to drive with roundabouts, it, it's just so natural for me. And, and like you just in, go. Inwood is yeah. so awesome. Oh, beautiful. To, to oh I'm there. anxious in Inwood it, still. It, I, I love it. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> I, there's a lot of stress of a roundabouts and I don't get it. I, yeah. I just, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't get this the one. I'm it. good. You know, yeah. I'm just going like you said. I'm because uh, hey, height is behind me. When does the first shovel? Pierce the dirt on this project, Mike. Any idea? Uh, no, I I do not have a date. Estimate six months, a year, two years. Well, a month. They they day after the election. No, no, they'll, they'll probably <laughs> day they'll, before. They'll start as soon as yeah, the I, weather permits. I think I mean, this that, year. Jimmy Ruston's department. Yeah, and I'll give him some credit here. When when they put the shovel in the ground, they go um, driving down to Charleston. That road from. Morgantown to, to Charleston's been through Clarksburg's been under construction, new bridges going in. I mean, they, they repaved that whole thing. And he indicated this wouldn't be contracted out. This would be DOH um, doing the actual work. So I was surprised by that. I'm surprised as well. I did not realize they had a workforce sufficiently large to do this. Yeah, he indicated sure he had the, the people and the equipment to do this on their own. That they didn't think they would have to contract any of this out. Has there been any mention of a resurfacing of some of the lanes, if not all, the lanes of I-81 at some point, Mike? That's a federal um Yeah, I don't think so. I haven't heard anything they, to they've that. They've resurfaced that, what, six times in the last 10 years? <laughs> Well, they've rebuilt Something's it. Something's always they shut down. That's I don't think for they've sure. resurfaced it once. Uh, uh, they've done quite. A bit. That's well. The, there's there's the, always something going on, but yeah. the, an entire resurface I've not seen. From from eight to twelve, those that section there where they widened it to three lanes that that's been resurfaced within the past couple of yeah. years. No. Yeah. 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 N impossible. Absolutely. A road cannot be that it, bad it and have been resurfaced. From, yes. From it, exit it, 8 to exit 12. Absolutely. It was brand new. Oh, I, okay. All right. Fair yeah. enough. I don't, I, don't, I don't see yeah. 8 to 12. I see yeah. I see 26 to 16 regularly. Gotcha. Yeah. And I know they patch things, which just seems to make it bumpier. Instead of going down like a pothole, you now go up like a mini mountain. <laughs> well, you're going, a, you're going 100 miles an hour on 81 anyway. Well, so and that, from 23. I, I rarely go over 95, but maybe you go 100. <laughs> 23 to the bridge, the Maryland Bridge is all new as well. Yeah. So you're talking essentially from exit 23 down to 16. 16. Um, which it, 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 I'm not going to deny it could use some some work. It needs some TLC. Yeah. And and speaking of TLC, so Apple Harvest Drive there, the you know the pain in the you know where. Yeah. Um, we're working on it. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of construction. That's going to be. There wide is a end. lot of construction. That's your turf, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I, I think that project um, is coming along. They just completed all the uh, drainage and stuff. I think that'll be widened, and they'll work on the lights because it is a nightmare to get to the interstate. Whose job is it to synchronize traffic lights? <laughs> Department of Highways. Yeah. 
So, yeah. and, and, and I'll, I'll give them some credit. When you have an issue with, let's say, a, a, an intersection, and you go to them, they do do the study and look at it and say, okay, how can we make this better? Yeah, um, we've had an influx of dollars to work on our roads in Berkeley and Jefferson County, mm -hmm. which we all benefit from. There used to be, but the rest of the state has real needs. There used to be this philosophical argument in the southern part, you build it, they will come. In other words, the economy will develop. Our counter argument, we already have the growth here, we have to have it. I assume that philosophical, uh, philosophical argument still Pertains, but we have been getting some successes here. Well, we have, and, and Mike and I talked about this uh, before we came on yeah. on air. That, that that's part of my frustration is mm -hmm. I see um, I see uh, corridor H, which has you know 24 cars a day on it. I'm, I'm exaggerating, but um, and and see this big four lane highway that is sort of that if you build it they will come yeah. type scenario, which still needs to have 20 miles of Virginia connect to 81 before they're going to come. But I see all this and that's been approved, right? All these dollars going to that, and 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 I understand it. And I see the King Cole Highway down in the southern part of the state where you might have <clears throat> 30. 40,000 people across three counties and they're they're dumping all this money into the King Cole Highway for areas that this is what we need to do to attract um, industry and attract people but the place where, th where the densest populations are, are are sort of being overlooked or just having you know small amounts of money thrown to it so I, I there's a level of frustration on my part because of that um, but I understand the forward-looking um, uh, scenario that they have with those two pieces of, of, of road. So it's, it's still frustrating. In years past, our, our sense has been we've been getting lip service, admittedly very nice lip service, from the, uh, uh, from the governor and the secretary of transportation. Do you have a sense that we're getting more sincerity on their, their part than what we've had in times past? Um, I, I would say absolutely yes. Um, and that has to do with a lot of the um, the individuals that are in leadership positions here in, in the Eastern Panhandle, and you can't discount that. Um, when when the the Senate President calls Secretary Riston, it means a whole lot more than when Delegate Mike Hornby or Delegate Mike well, Height call. Oh come on, come on now. Well, yeah. it, trust me, it, no, it does because when not call, only is no. not only is he going to take the phone call, he's going to take the meeting and he's going yeah, to listen sure. and and sort of do what he's told. To a degree, um, obviously he takes orders from the governor, but it's the same thing. When the Senate president calls the governor, the governor will take the call, or at least his um, his number one guy will take the call, um, and, and things can get accomplished. And I th also think it's part of that negotiation when the governor wants something, the Senate wants something, the House wants something, they all get in the room and you, you, you're trading, trading this for that, this for yeah. that, and everybody gets what they yeah. want in the end. In order to get any idea what done. the total cost of this project will be uh no i, I did not even, see it didn't even ask i didn't see it in the story on the metro news page one way there'll the be other. a big sign up there all state dollars are you getting any federal no, i think no, there will be match. some federal yeah. i think there will be some federal money here yeah. right. most, most road projects are matched by the feds 90 percent to 10 percent. Yes. you guys uh have a, a, a session coming up uh sunday special session yeah thank you is it special or is it the interim session? just well, interims the, the interims this weekend um may is the special though. may well that's when it's supposed to be there's there's been no call yet um but that's when everybody's anticipating is the may during may interims that we'll have a special session what are you guys doing this weekend anything specific you're working on well i i, I didn't think, mean to hang out with me no, i meant like at the interim session um I, I think there'll be a lot of discussion of what the majority of people think is going the 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 call is going to be for the may uh, special session and that has to do with the budget and the the waiver programs uh the idd waiver the adw waiver um and the fact that uh, one of them was defunded by $11 million. Um, How and why? Because of the clawback uh, prospect of a clawback. That I think that's why they defunded. So I think that's all going to come back. But um, I also think there'll be, there has been a push from, uh, especially from our side, uh, the House side, is we really want that discipline bill um, put on the agenda too. So I hope that goes on there too. 
Mr. Hornby's a whole lot nicer than I am. I, I don't why they cut eleven million dollars out of IDD. I don't know. I tell you right now, I wasn't happy about it. Um, Explain the IDD program because you you reference this a lot, but I'm not sure how many of us yeah, really so, understand it. Uh, IDD is roughly individuals with developmental disabilities. So the the individuals in within the state of West Virginia with developmental disabilities um, have a waiver program through Medicaid, and some of these individuals. Um, are what I, I call forever three, okay? They may be 50, 60 years old, their, their mental capacity, three years old, five years old, two years old, whatever it is. <clears throat> they will forever need to be taken care of. Um, and the state does that. The state takes care of their own. These are West Virginians and we need to take care of them. Some of them don't have any family and therefore they are taken care of by agencies um, that provide 24 seven, 365, care for them in, in a direct care way. Um, and then the state reimburses those agencies for that work. With well, the reimbursement rates are so low right now that, that these individuals are being paid nine and $10 an hour. In Berkeley County, you cannot find people to work for nine or $10 an hour. It is impossible. It's almost impossible to find people in Boone County to work for nine or $10 an hour. So the the idd has said that you have there was a study last summer that said the reimbursement rates have to be raised for direct care workers in this area and then they come with this budget and they cut it by 11 million dollars now the, the important thing you have to know is for 11 million dollars of state money means roughly another 75 million dollars of federal money. So in total, you've lost close to $90 million out of this program that was already in crisis. So I was furious at the final day of, of session when the budget came out. And without, this, warning, right? without warning. Without yeah. um, warning. And I stood up and, and voiced my displeasure. Um, I'm starting to think that maybe this was intentional to get it to get us through the the budget crisis we had at the time, and force us back to the table before July one, um, and that's exactly what has happened. We have been forced back to the table. We are going to have a and special session to address this. I think that was the plan all this. along. Was we all heard the rumors that we were coming back for first? Yeah. This, this was a fake budget that we passed. It, how how does IDD how does that fit into Medicaid Medicare reimbursement? Well, it is all it is all Medicaid. Okay, so that's what I the thought. The state the state's Medicaid budget is about five billion dollars. Okay, and and this is part of to Senator. Tar's, this Senator Tar orchestrated a lot of this, and to his credit, he has tried to dive into the division of DHHR and into this Medicaid budget and say it's constantly expanding. We don't know where the money's going, and he has taken the budget and and pulled things apart and given its own line item, so you can see where the money's being spent a whole lot better. And I think he's doing an admirable job at doing this. We just have to find within that budget where money is being wasted and put it over in the areas where it is really needed. And I think that's what he's trying to do. Uh, I, I commend him for it. Um, but we need to take care of these issues, these areas, and we need to take care of them before July 1. Well stated, Mr. Height. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in today. Great information. Thank you, sir. You're, you're giving me a wry smile, Mr. Hormy. <laughs> Pleasure to be here, Rob. It's not payday till next week. You're good. Don't worry about it. Hey, I'm going to send you out with some of your favorite music here. I see that suit. <laughs> this is what I see, baby.